moving to oneness. Nourishing curiosity. Embracing differences. Becoming one. This will be a very, very oh, magical cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> radio podcast show oh, I love with that. the moving to what is yes, <laughs> love yeah. that excitement. And everyone, if you're only listening, you do need to look at the video for a second because the sun is playing with the trees, yes. with nature on my face and it's really only half of the face so this is gonna be really something it's, interesting is gonna come to light yes, during yes, my beautiful yes. conversation today i have with roger burnley and roger is sitting in la where he brings the morning sun where we bring together the energies of the day and even though also the setting sun and him the rising sun also LA is the ocean, so we have a lot of, um, ooh, I can sense the waves of the water coming in, bringing this new energy of, of, of change and going in also communication with the land and going up a little bit of the mountains wherever you are in California. And here again, there is this interplay. So it's a very, very, very dynamic day. So this is going to be a very, very <laughs> dynamic podcast. So again, Roger, welcome to the Moving to Oneness podcast. Thank you so much. And I, I, I'm honored to be here. And I'll tell you, um, when I knew what we were coming to do today to talk about this oneness, I thought, well, maybe it would be a good idea if I moved into that. And so whenever I have a thought about something, of course, the synchronicity starts to show up, yeah. the events start to align themselves, and I'm coming to understand what all of that means. <laughs> So and I'll tell you, this is so interesting. I was talking to my associates yesterday and I mentioned that we were going to be doing this podcast today. Yeah. And so I said, I know it'll it'll be what it's supposed to be. And and then I said, I want to come up with the right messaging for the work that I do for my program and for all of that. And I said, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I always like to put things out there and then allow the universe to bring me the information or the clarity or whatever it is. Cause I know um, that it will come, it will show up. Yes, it will. So as I'm going to, <laughs> this is so, so crazy. And it's still, <laughs> it's still, I'm still like recovering from it. But anyway, I was going to bed last night and I sometimes will listen to videos or something to fall asleep and sometimes it's music. But last night I pick up my iPad and there's a video sitting there and it was of um, with Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. And Oprah was interviewing Caroline Mace, M-Y-S-S um, -S is how you spell her now. I think she yes. pronounced it Mace, but she's, she's interviewing Caroline. Caroline is a medical intuitive. A very now, good one. Yes, yes, yes. And I remember first being introduced to her, I, I don't know, 25 years ago, possibly or something, mm -hmm. and watching her and, and being so impressed. And then especially because of the things in my life, um, physically that I've gone through that made me pay a little more attention to this kind of information. And so as I'm sitting there, and I'm listening to her them speak and Oprah's doing the same thing. Now, Oprah, she made mention of, I got to talk about this because the dates were so crazy. She made mention of when she first met Caroline and I'm thinking it was in the nineties and I guess maybe that's when I first heard of her as well. And then as they were in this conversation, Oprah kept getting surprised by some Ooh. of the information that Caroline was saying. And she even acknowledged, she goes, I think I may have read this before and, and I've been talking about this and I probably even maybe got it. Maybe I, I got that from your book. I don't know. And so <laughs> it was just, and she's going on. And as I'm sitting there, as I'm listening to this, my body became so amazingly uncomfortable. I, I could not even stay in my body because I knew what was happening. I was getting this recognition. 
I was having this recognition in which all came out in my writing this morning. And it's like, you're still trying to answer that question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? You see, because I'm sitting there listening to this information and I'm thinking, did I make this up or did I just steal it from Caroline? Is that what I did? Maybe that's what I did. How could I, where, why are we so aligned? Why am I hearing this now? Beautiful that's what question. I wanted to see. And it is going to oneness. <laughs> that's what it is because it's the aspect of knowingness which is exactly what Caroline said as well, that we are all moving into embracing right now. And that's the oneness that we're talking oh, about. <laughs> this is beautiful to hear. It was, it was so astonishing. And then when I got up this morning, and, I, and I, I'll be quite honest, I know that we all have these questions. We, will, we, have, we all have intuition. We all have that. Yes, we but do. we question it and we doubt it. Because first of all, and, I, and this came out in my message this morning, we don't believe that we have been here a long time. We don't believe that we are these eternal beings. So how could we connect to information <laughs> that was like ancient, for instance? How could we know that? But we do. Hmm. How can we know that? We do know, right? But because we were always told we don't know, so other people could control us. And yes. that has been around the world and for many, many generations. Right. There was, Mylene, there was another thing that came up in my message, and they reminded me of this when I do my talk to my guys. This, this information comes up, and they said, sometimes you confuse your guides with your teachers. <laughs> Now this I want to hear. This is, is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm because we have guides. <laughs> we have guides mm -hmm. and they are supposed to lead us to information. But we are the ones who are our own teachers. We we're taking new we're taking the information that our guides are leading us to and what we're supposed to do as humans because that's why we decided to be born is to take this information and add something new to it. That's how we evolve. No words. Yeah. Beautiful. This is this is really deep. Uh, and uh, I love that you're speaking this out in this time in this month. And um, this is so important. This is now the time y your show comes out right on uh, the day. Today is the 17th of March, right? We're meeting in European German time at 17. 17. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so it is, first of all, a really important co conversation we're having, but we knew that before <laughs> we met and we clicked and we knew we have to good. It's time for us to come together yes. to create together. But the right. times out there at the moment in March of 2021 is here for everyone to acknowledge to recognize, to become aware, I don't care what kind of word <laughs> you want to use. Right. But it is to see that you are important, that whatever you say is needed, right. in whatever you say in any second, and that we're here to nudge you forward. The energies are here to nudge you forward. Yes. Um, beings are here to nudge you forward overall in the cosmos, in the material and non-material worlds to be show the world who you are and why you're now here. And so be not afraid and we'll talk so much more about how Raja will be enable you uh, to do that as well. That's exactly what, wonderful that you said that because that, <laughs> that's what came up in my, the last part of my message this morning. So of course that would be, that would make sense. It said, well, wait a minute, I will help people if I decide to help myself and own this and move forward. And the point is, and why we came together is because we all need this confirmation. Yeah. We need, and so when we find like-minded individuals or when we hear information that causes this memory to emerge, it's like, oh yeah, I kind of knew that from somewhere. Now, what am I supposed to do with it? The one thing that I, I, I really moved to recently, 
because it was my life. I'm, I, it's the same thing that Caroline said, which I keep saying to everyone, you're, you, you have a per life purpose because you're living it right now. It yeah. is what your life is. That's all it is. And so I, I'm, I'm knowing that I'm being so drawn right now or moved or inspired to help everyone come to understand that because our evolution is accelerated when more people understand that they are a part of this. I, I think that and I was, I'm a, the, the best example of this, we will place these mentors, these big leaders and everyone way above who we are because we could not possibly embody all of that, whatever it is that we believe they have. And I say, no, wait a minute. I think that all of our leaders, including Jesus and Buddha and, and Allah, everybody, the message was all the same. You yes. have what we all have. Mm -hmm. And we just are supposed to embrace that. And again, turn it into something new. And that's what we're all doing now. And But now we're in this whole different area, arena, so to speak, where it's more collective, which means that we are coming together because there's more power. There are, there's power in numbers. And so that's exactly what we're doing. And we're moving into this much lighter place of our entire existence, of our global existence. And it always looks crazy before we do that. Yeah, yes. So uh, this is a time that has been uh, predicted for a long time. So mm -hmm. 2020, 2021, 2022, right. um, as it gets lighter, it's because it's going to become less dense for us mm -hmm. to move around to maneuver in the material world, right? right. And um, so, yes, and there is this change, this transformation. I always say, Raja, right, yeah. we're creating new realities. And yes, we were, it was very hard for many of us. I would say more our generation, uh, maybe a few years down, maybe a decade, but then it's changing. They don't have that as much. We still right. uh, looked up on people and put them on pedestals. And yes. I can remember, mm, in a group when I was working with a shaman and um, he, he said, oh, everyone in this room is already at their best and can heal whatever in the world they needs to be healed. It took years for the students so to acknowledge. <laughs> I think if I look back now, that was 2009. Right, yeah. yeah. And now I can see that a uh, few of them really got it or right. not got it, but say finally yes that is so true i am who i am i have fantastic wisdom i mm -hmm. can act on it implement it and what is so important as we you know uh, we we uh, dissolving reality so that needs a little strength force energy determination focus but also then to create something new out of it and this new does not exist yet. So I say there is no one we can <laughs> go to and say, oh, you, whoever we have put on our petal stools before, uh, what are we supposed to do now? And it doesn't right. work this way. We really have to find it out. And that's why it's so beautiful. You pointed that out, Roger, that we're coming together as a community. We're collaborating because it's a communal movement. There's not a single person doing this. We're doing this all together. And this is the fun of it. And we can nudge each other forward and embrace each other and make each other feel safe to unfold and explore, experiment, to mm -hmm. get those experiences to then teach. The other thing that's come through pretty consistently in my messages over the years and that what I'm supposed to reiterate or bring back to the world is that there, there's, no, there's no hierarchy of souls, meaning we our souls are all born equal. Now we may demonstrate that in different ways as we're here or choose to manifest that in different ways, but we all have access to the same stuff. That's all it is. And then what I try to get people to understand and that you have a specific evolutionary journey. 
meaning that your soul has been here and it's moving through many different things. And so it's not gonna look like anybody else's journey, it's yours. It's unique and it's individual. And so that's the thing that we're always trying to own, embody and to live out. Mm -hmm. and, and again, if we've been, and you've brought this out so many times when we've been taught that we can't do that, that we're not supposed to be those people and we grow up believing that for so long, we have to then keep knocking that down and open up to who we're supposed to be, which is I decided that the rest of my life is that work, allowing people to open up and embody every aspect of who they are, because it's brilliant. That's what I feel with every single person. Mm, this is beautiful. We've spoke before and I remember bec because everyone, he is the master of the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Raja, he's been quiet about this. He's helped people develop their voice to feel comfortable to bring out from deep within what needs to be shared with the world um, for them uh, to shine, to loosen up, to change their environment with it. And it was so funny. And you said, ah, oh, yeah, and now finally I changed my whole uh, <laughs> Branding and my method to move everyone to wonders. I made that decision. I, I was thinking, uh huh, <laughs> haven't you been doing this all your life? But it is, it, you, you really uh, honed in on it and also saying it. And I think this is the other thing. We all feel now very safe mm -hmm. to say what we want to create, yes. what we desire to create, where I think before. Most of us have not yeah. felt comfortable with speaking those words out without feeling judgment. And because right. judgment is falling away, we don't feel as judged. And again, that is, it's easier to open up and to show more and you right. know, wait and see what everyone is going to do. And they say, oh, they love it. I can open up more. Oh, they love it. <laughs> you can open up more and more and, and then you know i think too we all have we have difficulties because we we are influenced by our circumstances as, as well as well our where we were born um even the particular race that we chose to be born this time the the sexuality we chose mm -hmm. and and gender and all of that stuff and if we think wait a minute i chose all of this before i came let's just imagine that that was possible and if so then why did i do it what was what was the reason? What did I want to accomplish? And Good so question. I take I use when I use this idea, I take people back to look at their lives. It's, and, I, and I give them these crazy, this crazy stuff because I want them to start to accept it. I said, listen, you may have these issues about your parents, but you chose them. <laughs> I said, just think that if you think you chose your parents, now ask why, because you're always going to find something within that relationship within your upbringing that you have used to form who you are now and who you are now is really brilliant. You just maybe haven't figured that out, but it is really brilliant. Yeah, even if we rebelled against our parents, yes. so there was a reason or was it a reason to do as they did? Mm -hmm. uh, was it to do the opposite, right? There is always a reason and luckily we have two parents. So yes. we have uh, two ways. So we always learned right away to have two opinions and maybe a third one. And maybe I always said in my family, we had four bosses <laughs> my brother <laughs> as well, <laughs> since we're all little. <laughs> and yeah, and so in what kind of environment and this uh, forms out, even if it's trauma, but when they, we looked at it, why did we go into there? Was it safety? Again, maybe safety. Mm -hmm. what we stayed in there for a while but then came the moment to say no longer no more right. and what did you do in that moment when you said no longer what was the input what did you think what did you decide and what mm -hmm. are you creating out of that now yeah i also i i went back and i i have my uh people i work with my clients i have them go back and do these life reviews because we can find so many ideas about who you are now, what you're supposed to do when you look at a little bit of that stuff. Um, and so I just started thinking about my, my family, just the construction of my mm -hmm. family. And so it, when I do that, it's, it's pretty easy for me to figure out how I form um, some of my beliefs and the ways of being. 
and 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 some of the the difficulties and the conflicts that I set up. First of all, I had one side of my family, uh, my mother's side of the family that was very religious and very stoic. They just, everything had to be done the right way. And it was very, you know, and it was more important what everyone else thought about how we were perceived and seen. So that was one side of the family. My father's side of the family didn't care about any of that. <laughs> they just said, just go do whatever, be free, be, do. And so I always, I was, I would go back and forth between these two ideologies, so to speak. And I go, where do I fit in there? And I thought, hmm, okay, I think I'm supposed to find some balance between those two. And that's what I'm, what I'm doing. And so I thought, okay, I can understand the restrictions that my one side of the family put on me, but I know that I'm here to move beyond those. So that's why I had the example of the other side of my family. And so I was given everything. And you start to figure that out at some point. And then given those things, and I can look at my life, so what am I supposed to do with it? So I thought, okay, I'm supposed to help other people kind of figure that out <laughs> if I've done that. That's what we're all doing. Everyone has something that they have lived that is valuable and that the world could benefit from when they start to accept it and understand what it is. Yeah, life is beautiful. This planet is beautiful. You are beautiful. I am beautiful. We all are beautiful beings. So complex, right. so fascinating. Uh, we change every single second. Every sure. there's always growth. We are uh, beings oh, you said that else. can move around. <laughs> You're so funny. You said something else. I go, yeah, we're changing. And so also, I, it was so funny. I just have this just happened this morning, which is why I'm looking at this. I uh, had a, my DNA test done a long, long time, a while ago. Oh, I want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I kept seeing, I go, and I thought, wow, this is really um, different because I thought I would have thought looking at me, maybe I was all from Africa or something like that. And then I look at the results and I'm thinking, Oh, wow. No, I'm not. It's like I'm 25% from all these other places. And then what happened um, when I had the one result, then today I, I received an email saying, oh, you have new results, meaning that they found more stuff. More connections. More connections. And then, your, and then so then your, your um, discovery of who you are starts changing. Then now all of a sudden today I'm 12% Scottish. <laughs> wow, very ancient. Now they have ancient wisdom, ancient tribes, everyone. Yes. <laughs> this is going to be like, in you carry God. If you think about what you carry within you, Raja, then. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes. and the bridging. And you know, that brings me to a point that was a really uh, fascinating, right? We don't, we go can be more precise than DNA nowadays. And when we find research or beings, uh, humans, beings, I mean, now. right. Um, sure. Through the protein, I forgot not what a protein, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. we can see that our whole uh, humanity was very movable, that we moved from the southern hemisphere up to the north. Anyway, you know, we were much faster. So it's not this slow, dun, 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 you know, walking or maybe even running. In, in Europe, people walked from Köln all the way to Africa each single winter. So they didn't have to stay in eight days. So that means people were able to move much faster. Um, but that we were mixed. We had Aborigines up, up north in Lapland, right? There was movement and also people lived much more mixed than what we both got taught yeah. still in history. I remember in New York when I lived there and I was at the National I don't know, History Museum and they had this show, this just this ways of people moved around and i said oh my god we can dissolve this as well this right this is happening now and not just energies uh, but our history the way what we've seen and what we've been listening to and now it's time to believe in your ancient thoughts in your dreams look at your ancestors look at where they come from what they carry look at your parents why are they in certain situations mm -hmm. why were they in this way what did they experience? What did their parent experience, right? Or even of your partner, you can go, or of your friend, right. or maybe even of your boss. And suddenly if you 
open it up to looking at more you learn so much more and you under have a different understanding and again we find similarities that right. we can connect to and i think that is so important that we see ourselves um, and each other much vaster mm -hmm. much greater and all of us carrying this knowledge if now or a long time before oh absolutely i am um... I never cared about history before when I was younger. I didn't, I mean, it was, I, I studied it because I had to in school. Basically, that's how it felt. But recently I started thinking, I think we're supposed to look at this a little bit more. I think so we're supposed to know. I think so we're supposed to add something else to this. And so, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I started watching all these documentaries, these historical things. I go, why am I doing this? I didn't know what was going on. And then when the pandemic started, then I understood because I was being, and I was being told, I'm, you're just being prepared to understand what is going on. And then, um, and just the other day, I found something else. I decided people are going so crazy about talking about the vaccines and all of that. And I, did, and I, and I, and everybody has their own beliefs about what's going on. And I thought it's fascinating. I want to know what the history is of that. And so I found um, this one site, it was the University of Pennsylvania, I believe, I know, a research site, and they just wanted to make information really available. And so I started seeing, looking, going back to um, China in 1000, and when the first inoculations, or what they, whatever they call them then, and then the discoveries that were made over all of the centuries. And every discovery that we made coming through something that caused us to need some healing, some big healing, like mm -hmm. a pandemic or whatever might have been going on, um, we then evolved as individual, as humanity, as 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 humankind. We evolved each time. We can see it if we look at it. We can look at the industrial revolution. We can look at every kind of revolution that happened that always came after a craziness. <laughs> that's what yeah. that's how I looked at 2020. We all went through, we thought 2020 was going to be the time where we could see everything. 2020 vision. Well, it was. It was. Because stuff had to be uncovered so we could heal. And that's mm -hmm. all we're doing. Yeah, and it, you know, with more clarity, so the more skies clarity. are more clear, right. our perception is more clear, I think people uh, physically, their eyes are improving, we are becoming more aware and can recognize and see further into the distance, further into the sky, we can feel better because there is um, this width of, I sense it like this, there's this the space that is be created, giving everyone the opportunity to find their own rhythm, right. but right. not just, um, let's say in, in, in society or here on the planet where we live, mm -hmm. they have time for themselves. And mm -hmm. also then it goes inward. So each little cell can find its own rhythm and that changes us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's, you, it's interesting you were saying that too, because Caroline was talking about that a little bit last night and saying that when we change as that we're connected to our ancestors and all that, and guess what? We're changing that as well. Yeah. We're changing what they went through. We're changing their experience. We're all that responsible. We all have that much ability and that much power, you know? And as Caroline said, if we have one drop of this power within us it's within all of us yes and as you have brought out so brilliantly the oneness that we're all moving to and that's really what it is, is yeah, so we're not moving to yeah but yes in a way too we again i yes. would say just a recognition that it is within us uh, we're yeah. seeing it we're hearing it we're feeling it we're recognizing it within us we recognize it in the world we live in we see it in in nature we see it in animals or we see it enough you know it comes now from all a direction and it's very important that we find it also amongst each other um because it creates right away an extreme calmness mm -hmm. an extreme settlement right. uh when you recognize yourself in someone else 
Right. Fear can disappear in just like that. Uh, a comfort, oh, as we were speaking at the beginning, opening up. And I would love for you to speak a little bit also today about the, the voice right in that moment when, when this happens to us. This relaxes, mm -hmm. right? Our whole body can go into this softness, into this gentleness. Also, our a counterpart, maybe we're speaking with, or the group around us, mm -hmm. or even if you're just alone somewhere in 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 the woods or at the ocean. The tone that comes out of you is different. Your whole muscles in the face relax, so uh, you can craft. For me, I love. <laughs> You know, right. each word is a way of crafting something new, right. of bringing manif you know, manifestation through and materializing something. The moment you speak it out, right. when we sing it out, when we scream it out, when we hum it out, even when we breathe it out mm -hmm. Correct. or in, because in the same moment, how do I breathe in then the vibration, the energy of your voice? right mm -hmm. the, the the creations of 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 your voice there was something that i had to become comfortable with and it kind of um talks speaks to this area mm -hmm. as you're coming up with and and about the voice i had the, it's about the way we choose to own or express our voices and to own them as well mm -hmm. and certain times for whatever reason there's certain certain parts of our voices we're not willing to own and for me it was my angry voice and because my angry voice would come up at times and I go, oh, no, this is too frightening for me. Why is this going on? Until I had to come to the point, place where I had to interpret that in a different way. Number one, a lot of times I would get very angry when I would see things going on in the world that I disagreed with, that I thought were not just or fair and made me angry and caused all kinds of things. It just happened last night. As a matter of fact, I saw something go on in the world that was just, I thought was horrible and my anger came up. And so, but I started to understand that I needed to have it. I needed to see that thing occurring in my experience for me to become angry so that I can embody who I am to be here this time on this earth. And that is a person of love. And that is a person of giving and caring. And so sometimes when I get stuck, I have incidents that will cause me to become angry so that I can start to work on something. Now, what I what if I never address my anger at other people, it's usually typically at myself. And I understand that. And the thing that I really got in touch with and especially recently within the last couple of years, more specifically, is that I would become angry when I was withholding what I knew. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was what it was. And I think, why, why aren't you helping? Why aren't you doing something? We all have that ability. And so that anger, I realized, was I was, I was getting upset with me. You could do more. And then we all will find these places of the potential that we all possess, but we don't want to own it. We don't want to believe it. This was the experience that I had last night listening to Caroline, because I'm feeling like, wait a minute, you know this information, she's saying it. How come she can sit there and say it so confidently and to own it and you can't? Well, because she's your guide and she's just showing you. That's all. And now you're supposed to do it. That's what we're all up to. Yeah, this is so that, you know, you see it. Ah, I've been, again, I, I know that I've been speaking about this. And why didn't I know, write it down yet? And, and it doesn't need it, right? The right person right. always speaks it out. We don't need right. to all do that. Some of us bring only that word and you're one of them to this uh, planet for right. others to speak out that you because you are someone who who brings a lot of uh, energy, you bring a lot of newness, that's something of, of your being. And so this is also an anger. So then can we even say that? That comes the other question. So are you able to say, you know, I, I bring this here, I, I open up the, the energy, I open up the space, I open up the awareness for others to speak this. Mm -hmm. Oh, before that was only you were mentioning, you know, there were the gurus right. or, or we maybe said, yes, Jesus can do it, but we right. all can do it. Exactly. Yeah. And so we is... all have different functions. That's one of, of yours. 
Right. And, and also I'm, you teach others to sing it and bring it out. That's what I, and that's why I talk about it in this way, because I'm completely transparent. And another thing that I heard Caroline say last night, because you, you we think that because we reach a certain a level, so to speak, of awareness or openness or whatever, that that's going to be it, that we're done somehow. We're never going to have a bad day. We're never going to be down on ourselves if we reach that level. And that's never the case. We would we would stop to evolve if that were going on. And so uh, Oprah asked Caroline last night, well, do you have, are, are you always in this good place? You always understand and see everything? She goes, no. <laughs> she says, you should look at my calendar. <laughs> she said, I write down good day bad day, good day, bad day. That's wow. all. It is. Yeah. And but again, that gives us all permission to accept these rhythms that we might move through. And these, you know, days, well, I'm a little down today. Okay, well, let's explore that. Yeah, wow. you know, because that's also good at it, talking about sound and music and those days. A long time ago, when I still lived in Atlanta, I listened to The Infinite Mind was a radio show. And I can, I was driving to the museum and I remember even when I was in that moment in Atlanta, uh, who was with me, you know, it was when it's so precise. So he was speaking about Schumann, a German uh, composer, uh -huh. and he was, they called it manic depressive. I don't call it. I just think he was really a very creative person going right. through with his as creating realities, decreating, yeah. you cannot create in a decreative, uh, right. you know, when, when you're in that force. It's like Gandalf, if he decreates, he can't create. Um, but the important part was he had to have these super fun, uh, vibrant days where he could jump above the criticism of mm -hmm. the existing people. Right. And there he could create before then later they would say, oh, what kind of stuff have you been creating your, you know, your, your wacko, not knowing a <laughs> hundred years, people will just love his music over and over and listen it around to it around the world. And then he would go in again and go down. But when you're down there, you again, get something out of yourself and, and deep. And you, as you said, so beautiful, we question in that phase. So there's more always a questioning phase. Oh, I where, love that explanation, though. That helps so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then there is this phase where we, we go and do. So this is for me, too. Then you you pay, you don't question. You go right. into the flow of concern. The writers have that, too. There are all these questions. How, when, why, blah, 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 blah. But then they're creating. And it is a hard work. I'm not going to say it's. So then they, you work in it, you, you, you immerse yourself into it and you feel it in your whole body, especially if you can, and boom, and then it comes out, then you can write all night long, maybe two, three, right. four, five days or whatever your style is, or maybe an, an hour and everything is written. Well, speaking of the writing, and this is so, I, fi I still find this so amazing and fascinating to me because I will write something mm -hmm. in the mornings. I do it every day. I do automatic writing and channeling and and then I will read it that day and pretty much, well, you know, I'll understand. It'll make sense. However, when I come back to it years later, it's like, I go, who wrote that? Where did it come from? <laughs> How did they know <laughs> that kind of thing? And so, again, it's just to kind of reiterate this fact that we have information, that we know more than we do, that we think we do. And, and as we allow ourselves to believe that, to open up to it, more information starts coming in. It just grows and grows. And that's it. And that's what in, intuition that's how intuition develops when we start giving it permission to be there, to know that we we have it and can accept it. Yeah, you said something last time we conversed. You said your work also with voice, what you did before, or maybe the whole phase of your life is what honed over and over your intuition, oh, yes. who made you more aware of who you are. Share a little bit about that. Maybe someone who's going to listen is going to recognize himself in that and see is that, okay, I'm doing what I'm doing now is right. It shows phases of myself uh, that are natural within me. And right. that I'm starting to recognize and also then use them because, because we're moving now in the time of using. We have done a lot of thinking, everyone. It's now time to use. So, Roger, please share a little it's, bit about you, this. Okay, you gave me a whole different way of talking about this. And so much of it came, was starting to come up yesterday as well. So, 
I tell people I didn't even go into my vocal coaching work until I was into my in my mid 30s. Now, mm -hmm. most people would think that they would find their career, their lives and all that beforehand. I had done so many other things that were not, you know, fulfilling, but they I earned money and they they kind of worked anyway. But when I was a kid at 12, um. I didn't know that I could sing or wanted to sing. I had no desire, but someone said, oh, you could sing. So in school is when they started putting me in choirs. It felt like that to me. They started putting me in choirs, but I was incredibly insecure always. And then in high school, I had one teacher going into high school. I had one um, choir director who saw some potential in me. I didn't, he did and kept pushing me. And I, this was so, I doubted it the entire time. And when I went to college, I was not going to go into music or anything. I was doing accounting. I had to do something like my parents did. Let me do that. That's what I'm supposed to do. And so later in my life, I thought, wait a minute, this singing thing is still there. But I just did it for fun. I just thought maybe I'll go and take some lessons. I'll work with some coaches or whatever. And, and then one time later, I said, no, I think I'm supposed to do more with this. And I didn't know why, but it, because I was terrified mm -hmm. and I wanted to get through the terror of doing this and I wanted to keep getting better. And so it was the thing that I used to kind of develop me was using my voice to become more comfortable with myself. And I didn't even want to coach someone else again. I had to be pushed all the time. I'm saying this because hopefully people will see that just because you need help and coaching doesn't make you weak. It means it makes you really smart most of the time. <laughs> and so, um, so I, my coach in, in 1988, he says, you need to start coaching. And I go, I'm terrible. I can't do that. I would never. He says, no, you must do that. And I said, okay. <laughs> and so then it turned into this career from so something that I, that was to me felt like this burden. And then I wasn't something I wasn't good at to begin with, and then it turned to this career because I was determined to use it as my way of developing. But then when I worked with all of these people, the magic thing that came out of that was that I started understanding humans a lot better. I started understanding how we all withhold that voice, as you said, we don't own it, what it is. It's an internal thing. It's a physical expression. It's all of those things, but we are not owning them because we haven't been owning us. Everyone listen. <laughs> yes. Beautiful, uh, owning us. Uh, but I, when I was listening, the thought came, but you are also where, uh, where, or still are very observant. So you look at people. Yes. So that is, so because of you seeing what people are and in a way it was so beautiful, you always had people around you that saw what you are right. and nudged you yes. <laughs> forward and believed in you. So yes. you're very, very lucky, but it is also something that you understood and you were right. able now to turn that around and use what this beautiful experience that you had by being seen right. and you saw all the others and then you see and then let them bring out their voice. So I, you, you have many, right. <laughs> many <laughs> fantastic. So it goes back to the truth and love that is uh, you have. Right. You. And, and it's so funny because I, I look back now and I think, how did I? Why didn't I know this before? Why didn't I know this earlier? <laughs> that's what we that's what we do. And I remember when I first started um, when I first started coaching, um, vo vo vocal coaching first, and, and then I was so excited about it because all I cared about was were the results. I just mm -hmm. wanted to see people um, ex ex expand, own something about them, whatever it might have been. And then I noticed that it went beyond that. I know that on a, I knew on a deep level that this was going to help change the world. I didn't know why, because I would have this response when I would coach a kid. I had some young kids I was coaching and then their parents would watch this and they would become so excited. And then I saw, oh, this is a generational thing. So if we can impress things of ability into the kids, they start to do it and pass it forward. Yes, 
that's what we're all doing. I thought, oh, that's it. And someone told me where I was supposed to be. Wow. So, the, you know, this is so beautiful because you also showed parents a different way to respond to their children and also to see their children in a different light. Oh, yes, yes. Wow. And it also gave me this awareness of how um, we adults can sometimes be uh, how we were programmed when we were younger, because I saw I witnessed it firsthand. And I, I mean, I would have to sometimes pull the parents aside. Okay, um, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's let them have, they're, they have souls. They really do have souls and their souls are trying to work through something. So let's allow that to happen. And that's what went on. A lot so every too. student was really, really lucky to be with you. Every yeah. child that, uh, uh, what I sense is you gave them really early on permission to be themselves, to find yes. themselves and through song, through voice. And at the same time, you prepared their environment, their surrounding to acknowledge and let it happen. <laughs> right. <Yes>. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So thank you. Wow. <laughs> uh, Very beautiful soul that, uh, and how, again, you know, and this is the ripple effect that is not to be underestimated. And we, that's what you were speaking at the beginning about right. is anything you do, everything I do, everything we do has impact. Yes. And then much farther reaching than we think in that moment. And when we become consciously aware of that, it becomes even more powerful because our thoughts will kind of infuse whatever we're doing. And so if we know that what we're doing is possibly going to make some difference to other people, it will. It will. Yeah. Well, so yeah. share a little bit how people can come to you and work with you. You did at the beginning because you yes, did, yes, yes. Okay. did a lot of, of, the que of the questions that you brought up that you probably also ask your clients to, to um, think about, to experience. Even, you know, I think you are letting people experience questions. That's a whole That's different it. way of questioning. Right. Or uh, bringing a question into ooh, being. Right. Because I want them to understand they do have the information. We all do. Mm -hmm. We just have blocked it off. And so if we ask the correct questions or the right questions that will bring that information forth, then we become empowered people because that's the only thing that I'm up for folks um, discovering. And in my program, Empowerment Made Simple, I say it's a self-guide. I want yeah. people to understand, I yeah, I've done this stuff, I'm going through it, and I'm still on my path. But because I've developed these things, I can give it to other people, you can do the same thing. That's all. And, and, and I know that I need to, um, when I'm doing my course, I talk about some of my experiences, because I want people to have proof, I want them to understand that no matter where they are, they can get to the place they want to be. And their past does not define their future. Yes, and, yes, and yes, good, that. good, good. <laughs> And so that's that's what I do. So now, um, uh, what I've done is I do talks every month, free free talks where I just want people to come and hear some information. And on that, they can find me at empowermeroger.com. I have my listings on there where people can find the different webinars that I might be holding during the month. And then I have my program, which is called um, Empowerment Made Simple which is I tell folks, this is a, a, a chance for you to completely transform your life and give yourself a year to work in this and really do it. One of the things that I found in personal development, spiritual development, whatever it is, mm -hmm. is that we have this because of our society, probably the times we grow up, we want instant results. And I go, that's not, that's not sustainable. And it's not durable when we get things in that manner. So when people win the lottery, they lose it right away because their consciousness has not been adjusted to accept that amount of wealth. You may not have been adjusted yet to accept the amount of brilliance that's within you. And so this program will help you un uncover that. Oh, this is beautiful the, uh, to experience the vastness 
Mm -hmm. And I think you are a fantastic teacher. So well, everyone who, if you go with Raja, I believe you're in really, really great hands. A, a soft, I mean, softness. I mean, yes. the, the softness again, that I think it has to, in the new era that is arising now, softness yes. has a different meaning. You're not a softie Thank you for saying that so or much. something that, but it's this, this softness, because if you think about it, Raja, even energy or the, you know, the, the vibration and, and, and the waves, we always see them as, as fields and in nature, they, they go as, as fields. So it is a softness and it's never a, a solid and, uh, yeah, so we're going to see that a different and we can be yes. so gentle and a genuine, soft, um, whatever other warm. Right. And we can well, change no, a lot talk, with those well, things. I'm so, glad you, I'm so glad you brought that up because uh, we've moved into an age where and we've heard so much more. And in this month, especially mm -hmm. the, the month of the woman embodying the female energy which is that nurturing caring loving energy that's what we're all moving into a bit more now and i always doubted that part of me because i always had so much of that in me and i thought oh this might be really weak this might be too and all of that stuff and so i judged myself and now i thought oh wait a minute no that's your superpower Ooh. Yeah, that's your, and so you just didn't know that before, that's all. And yeah. I'm saying it's the same thing for every single person. They all possess their own superpowers and we're just uncovering them. Yeah. And you know, also our, our purpose of these things, they're not so complex and they're very gentle. And also if, you know, I, I, I couldn't speak, converse, sing, talk a lot of, the different languages, many even of the star nations, they mm. have a very ma uh, soft language with loving words. And even there, it is hard for many people to accept yes. the gentleness in right. the vocabulary, also in the way it's spoken. Yeah, right. because it. Uh, they don't feel have so much resistance or density, so they can speak in a, a different a way. And so this is a, something new that is arising to feel comfortable with it and mm -hmm. to be present to it. Yes. Uh, great. <laughs> this, this is terrific. Thank you so much for this. This was Thank great. you, Roger. Thank you for your time that you shared your wisdom with everyone on our podcast and all of your notes and, and connections, uh, inform connecting information I'll put into the show notes, everyone. You or connect with me. I'll connect you to Roger. If anything comes, there is nothing separating you from him and they come maybe also into the facebook group we have that is called moving to oneness where you can meet each other because it's also important to create this community now as raja also pointed out where we here to nudge each other forward to see in each other how brilliant we are so yes. that would be a nice point and so have a wonderful time. Say yes to your gentleness, to your softness, as Roger and I will do more and more, because then our body becomes softer and more gentle. We move more and we're more in the flow, in, in a dance of life. <laughs> so this is Mylene, your host of the Moving to Oneness show. And I wish you the best. Bye-bye. And thank you again, Raja, for being with us all the way from LA. Bye-bye.